Hello again, everybody. Um, I'm James Champion. I'm telling the story of my journey to uh, India in the footsteps of my grandfather, F.W. Champion. Now, I've just told uh, about the story of my visit to Corbett National Park, where I finally managed to see some tigers. And from there, I went to the Dudwa National Park, which is a little further southeast uh, on the borders of Nepal. And uh, there, although I didn't see any tigers, um, I did have a wonderful uh, sighting of uh, two uh, great Indian one-horned rhinoceroses. This is a mother with her calf. She was, of course, not particularly uh, pleased to have us sitting on an elephant very close to her. Um, and uh, finally, uh, she turned away and I was able to get this very nice shot of herself and uh, her calf looking away to the left. So that was really very wonderful. We did actually see some tiger footprints or tiger pug marks there, but uh, no tigers uh, in the flesh, as it were. Now this is the type of habitat that the uh, rhinoceroses live in. At the time when I was there, there were 22 rhinos in the park. They uh, had been reintroduced and uh, of course they were under uh, almost constant surveillance because of uh, the dangers of their being poached for their horns. Of course, uh, Dudwa is right on the borders of Nepal and it would be easy to uh, poach the rhinoceroses and uh, uh, nip across the border and uh, have them away towards China where of course there's a great demand for uh, rhinoceros horn. So they're working very hard to protect the tigers in this, uh, uh, protect the tigers and indeed the, uh, the rhinoceroses as well in this particular park. But they're surprisingly difficult to find in this long grass. Uh, you would think that such large animals wouldn't be so hard to find, but they are. Now here we can see a picture of a forest rest house within the uh, Dudwa National Park. This picture was taken by my grandfather probably in the uh, 1920s. And here we can see the same uh, house today. Here we can see a picture taken by my grandfather again of that exactly the same type of uh, rhinoceros uh, habitat. At the time when he was there, I don't believe there were any rhinos in that area. They'd all been uh, shot out. So it's nice to think that they've been uh, reintroduced. Now, while I was there, I had a particular ambition to visit uh, one of the great uh, figures in the uh, battle to save the tigers, Billy Arjun Singh. Billy Arjun Singh uh, was living on the edge of the Dudwa National Park in a farm that he'd built called Tiger Haven. I was uh, very anxious to, uh, to visit him and uh, I finally managed to uh, get the opportunity to do this. I arrived and um, there was some misunderstanding at first because he, uh, when it was announced that uh, FW Champion's grandson had arrived, he misheard and thought uh, the person had said F.W. Champion had arrived, but as my grandfather died in 1970, that would have been somewhat unlikely. But anyway, he finally uh, understood and uh, we had a wonderful morning going through his photographs. He'd actually uh, studied uh, with my grandfather um, as his teacher and uh, he has had written a number of books in which he mentions that uh, my grandfather was a great influence on his life. So it was wonderful really to be uh, with him. Um, he also said that I should come back later uh, that afternoon because he mentioned to me that another person who knew my grandfather was due to uh, be visiting and arriving that afternoon. So I went back at about five o'clock in the afternoon and I was introduced to the man sitting on the bottom left here, John Wakefield. John Wakefield was, uh, I think at the time this photograph uh, was taken, around uh, 89 to 90 years old. And he was still driving his own Jeep and uh, he was living down in the south of India. Now John Wakefield had been a, a, a shikar or a hun hunting uh, organiser and uh, he had to apply to my grandfather for the permits that he needed in order to uh, organize his shooting tours. Now, of course, my grandfather was never very keen on issuing permits to people to uh, kill his beloved tigers. And I well remember him telling me when I was a small child that he sometimes issued permits uh, to people to uh, hunt in areas where actually he knew there were no tigers available. Now, when I arrived and met this splendid old gentleman, uh, John Wakefield, he said to me, now, young champion, I, I, I know your grandfather uh, used to issue permits to uh, people uh, for areas in which he knew there were no tigers, um, but I won't hold it against you. So that was a marvelous uh, thing to hear from somebody 70 years later. Now, sadly, I have to report that both Billy and uh, John Wakefield are no longer with us, which is a pity because uh, the Tigers have lost two of their greatest uh, champions. 
Now my final conclusions were, first of all, that my grandfather's work is not forgotten and this was very touching to me because uh, as I mentioned in the first uh, part, I didn't know whether my grandfather was remembered or not. So I was very pleased to find that he certainly has not been forgotten. And he seems to have influenced many of the wildlifers, as they refer to them, the people who are busy protecting wildlife uh, and doing their utmost to, uh, to keep his legacy alive. Um, much work is still being done by many different organizations on the issues which he felt were important, particularly on uh, tiger conservation, of course, but also other forms of conservation and uh, wildlife protection. However, tigers have declined from around 40,000 early in the 20th century to perhaps 1,300 in India today. Um, there is uh, still hope, um, but combating organized poaching and the illegal trade in tiger parts uh, is essential, particularly uh, this is a problem for, uh, because of the uh, uh, trade in tiger parts in China. And of course, many of these places in India are close to the border of Tibet, so uh, the uh, body parts can be smuggled over the border quite easily, um, but I was very touched and very impressed by uh, the work that's going on to try to uh, protect the last tigers and I, I would like to wish those uh, people who are dedicating their lives to that uh, every success in their, in their work. Now you followed me uh, in the footsteps of my grandfather. Um, later this year I'm due to do approximately the same thing in the footsteps of my great-grandfather George Charles Champion, the entomologist, in Guatemala and Panama. George Charles Champion was uh, in Central America from 1879 to 1883 and I shall be retracing his footsteps trying to find the exact locations where he did his insect collecting and I hope very much that you'll join me on that adventure.